Good afternoon, everybody. Let me start by welcoming the Home Secretary, her team, and members of the UK Press to Rwanda for the launch of this new partnership. Together, Rwanda and the United Kingdom have developed a truly unique approach to address the global migration crisis. This migration and economic development partnership reflects Rwanda's commitment to protecting vulnerable people, a principle which always governs the international policy of our government. It will also address a serious equity issue, which is the global imbalance in opportunities for human capacity development, which is driving irregular migration. Because of Rwanda's recent history, we have a deep connection to the plight of those seeking safety and opportunity in a new land. As you may be aware, Rwanda was formerly one of the world's leading producers of refugees, and many Rwandans have experienced what it means to be displaced. This has shaped how we approach migration and asylum. Rwanda already provides a refuge for almost 130,000 refugees from multiple countries, including neighbors like the DRC and Burundi, as well as Afghanistan and migrants evacuated from Libya. This work has involved partnering with international bodies such as the UNHCR, the International Organization for Migration, and the African Union, and we remain open to continue working with these and other organizations on this new program. For there to be meaningful long-term solutions to the migration crisis, which is causing huge suffering to millions, we need to do more than just give shelter. It is possible to frame migration in another way, and it is an opportunity for all societies to thrive. Fear and suspicion of those who need to move to build a better life makes it harder for all of us to better work out win-win solutions for all. Migrants make social, cultural, and economic contributions to societies in which they integrate. We believe that Africans and others from elsewhere should be able to live safe, dignified lives in Africa and should not be locked out of opportunity. This is why we need to work with partners on bold new approaches which tackle the root causes of irregular migration while providing immediate safety and opportunity to those currently in need. Madam Home Secretary, this is why Rwanda is pleased to work with the UK on this partnership. By relocating, by relocating migrants to Rwanda, investing in their personal development and providing education, employment, and other opportunities, we are giving them the chance to make new lives in our country as full members of our communities. This will not only help them, but it will benefit Rwanda and Rwandans and help to advance our own development. And for those who don't wish to make Rwanda their new home, they will be facilitated to return to their country of origin or settle in other receiving countries. We believe this partnership with the UK offers a unique and innovative approach that will provide a safe haven and opportunity to those in need and be the first crucial step towards a more effective and humane global migration system. We look forward to partnering with the UK on this exciting program. I thank you all and welcome the Home Secretary to make her remarks before we take a few questions from the media. Madam Home Secretary, 
The floor thank is you, yours. Minister. Thank you so thank much. You. And um, thank you for your incredibly warm welcome, certainly to my delegation and our colleagues from the UK media as well. Um, I'm delighted to be here in Kigali alongside our friend and partner, Minister Dr. Vincent Baruto. And I just would like to express my personal thanks in particular to him and his team for the constructive way in which we have been working um, over many, many months to achieve and deliver this partnership. The United Kingdom has a long and proud development history with Rwanda, and our shared interests have resulted in a strong, and strong economic and development growth, lifting millions out of poverty, but also resulting in growing manufacturing and technology sectors, which are generating jobs and sustainable um, growth for generations to come. Now, I know at first hand that your country, Minister, is a regional and international leader. You are on the global stage, very much yourself more often than not, but also hosting the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting, the World Telecommunications Development Conference and the Sustainable Energy for All Forum. Your national leadership is the African voice on international initiatives, which really speaks to seeking to find solutions to regional and international challenges. And I'm very honored to be here. And the UK is delighted to be working ever more closely with Rwanda. We have many, many interests in common, and we face many of the same challenges. And I want to turn to one of those challenges now. The global migration crisis and how we tackle illegal migration requires new world-leading solutions. There are an estimated 80 million people displaced in the world, and the global approach to asylum and migration is broken. Evil people smugglers and their criminal gangs are facilitating people into Europe, resulting in the loss of life and shoe costs to the UK taxpayer. The tragic loss of life of people in the Channel and in the Mediterranean at the hands of these evil people smugglers must stop. And today, our approach as two outward-looking countries has led to the signing of a new international partnership, which is a world first. It is a migration and economic development partnership with the country of Rwanda and the UK. This will see some of those arriving illegally in the UK, such as those crossing the Channel in dangerous small boats, relocated to Rwanda to resettle and to rebuild their lives in the way in which the Minister has just outlined. More than 28,000 migrants crossed the Channel last year by small boat in very dangerous and perilous conditions. The UK asylum system is collapsing under a combination of real humanitarian crises and evil people smugglers profiteering by exploiting the system for their own gains. Criminals are exploiting the hopes and fears of migrants, pushing them to making dangerous journeys to the UK with fictitious and false promises that they can settle in the UK if they make it. And this has devastating consequences for the countless men, women and children who have tragically lost their lives or loved ones on perilous journeys. It is also deeply unfair because it advantages those with the means to pay smugglers over the vulnerable who cannot. Global systems and conventions have failed to address this global crisis. And the world has changed, and renewed global leadership is required to find new innovative solutions to this growing problem. Today, the United Kingdom and Rwanda have signed a joint new migration and economic development partnership to put an end to this deadly trade in people smuggling. This is part of the United Kingdom's new plan for immigration, to control our borders, protect our communities, stop dangerous illegal migration, help the world's most desperate people, and welcome international talents to the UK. It is the biggest overhaul of our immigration system in decades, underpinned by a National Anti-Borders Bill, which will soon become law. Our country, the United Kingdom, has always extended the hand of friendship to those in need. In recent years alone, we have proudly welcomed tens of thousands of refugees from Syria, Afghanistan, Ukraine, and BNOs from Hong Kong. Rwanda has one of the strongest records for refugee resettlement. And in recent years, as the minister has just said, Rwanda has resettled over 130,000 refugees. It has an established record of welcoming and integrating people, such as those from the Democratic Republic of Congo and Burundi but also including, for example, people from Libya evacu evacuated under the EU's emergency transit mechanism in partnership with the UN Refugee Agency and the African Union. 
Rwanda is also a state party to the 1951 UN Refugee Convention and the seven core principles of the UN Human Rights Convention. Border control is fundamental to national sovereignty. Uncontrolled immigration reduces our capability and capacity to help those who need our support. It puts intolerable pressures on public services and on local communities. And at home, as the Prime Minister has said today, because the capacity of the asylum system is not unlimited, the presence of economic migrants, which these illegal routes introduce into the asylum system, inhibits our ability to support others in genuine need of protection. The British people are fair and generous when it comes to helping those in need. But the persistent circumventing of our laws and immigration rules and the reality of a system that is open to gaming and criminal exploitation has eroded public support for Britain's asylum system and those that genuinely need access to it. Putting evil people smugglers out of business is a moral imperative. It requires us to use every tool at our disposal and also to find new solutions. That is why today's Migration and Economic Development Partnership with Rwanda is a major milestone. It is also very much in keeping with our vision for Global Britain that harnesses the potential for new relationships and stimulates investments and jobs in partner countries. Working together, the United Kingdom and Rwanda will help make the immigration system fairer, ensure that people are safe and enjoy new opportunities to flourish. We have agreed that people who enter the UK illegally will be considered for relocation to Rwanda to have their asylum systems, their asylum claims decided. And those who are resettled will be given the support, including up to five years of training with the help of integration, accommodation, healthcare, so that they can resettle and thrive. This agreement fully complies with all international and national law. And as part of this groundbreaking agreement, the UK is making a substantial investment in the economic development of Rwanda. This will support programs to improve the lives of people in Rwanda and develop the country, the economy, job prospects and opportunities. In addition, the UK will provide funding and expertise to implement this agreement. As I have said many, many times, this is a global issue with many countries struggling to address the challenges and the causes. And there is no single or simple solution. This agreement illustrates that we can no longer accept the status quo. People are dying, and the global migration crisis requires new ways to find new partnerships and to find new solutions. It will also deal a major blow to the evil people smugglers. We know that this will not be easy. We know that we will face challenges along the way. But together with the Nationality and Borders Bill and the new plan for immigration, the UK will support those fleeing oppression and persecution and tyranny through safe and legal routes while controlling our borders and deterring illegal entry. Our world leading migration and economic development partnership is a global first and it will change the way we collectively tackle illegal migration through new, innovative and world leading solutions. Thank you. And I work with the New Times in Rwanda. Uh, uh, Honorable Minister, Minister Biruta, my question is how has Rwanda's experience, previous experience, in welcoming, in hosting, in integrating refugees and asylum seekers informed this decision on the part of the government of Rwanda? And Madam Secretary, my question is, how, uh, how did you reach, arrive at the decision to pick Rwanda to be your partner in this process? What factors did you look at? Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I think I mentioned uh, something about this in my remarks when I said that Rwanda is already hosting more than 130,000 refugees from countries like uh, Burundi, like DRC or even Afghanistan. And I also said that uh, our people here in Rwanda, a good number of them have, in their previous lives, 
faced these challenges of being displaced, being refugees or asylum seekers. So all these, ha the, 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 these experiences have informed uh, the government of Rwanda to be convinced that we should do something about this problem of irregular migration. There will be one way to look at this problem. One uh, would be to just look at it and be uh, just uh, indifferent. The other one will be to try new solutions because the problem is there. You have good principles in place, but they are not working. So as a government, we thought that we need eventually to partner with uh, the UK, among others, to do something about uh, the existing problem. So our history, our past has informed uh, our decision to work with the UK on uh, innovative solutions to the migration crisis. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. Um, James, thank you for your question. And you've asked how did um, we reach the conclusion to partner with Rwanda. And, and as the Minister has said, um, this is very much number one, a partnership. Um, and clearly, we engage in dialogue, and we have been for over nine months now. But Rwanda has a very unique history in terms of refugees and resettlement, resettlement in particular. Um, first and foremost, Rwanda is a safe and secure country with the respect for the rule of law. And clearly, um, a range of institutions that have evolved and developed over time. And with that, the skilled way in which Rwanda has already provided resettlement for almost 130,000 refugees from multiple countries um, and look at that alongside many of the um, good innovations that have taken place, along with some of the investments, um, the economic development, the fundamental principle of respecting human capital and investing in people. Um, if I may say so, Rwanda has been very forward-leaning and has been very dynamic in the conversations that we've had as well around, yes, economic growth and the partnership, but respect for people. Um, and giving them the ability to find new opportunities, but effectively restart their lives, rebuild careers potentially, and settle here successfully. Shigi Marike from Sky News. Um, Australia have set up their own offshore processing system, and there are reports of uh, self-harming and even people taking their own lives because these people are, are going through t tremendously difficult times with their mental health and, and they've made a difficult journeys. I wanted to just ask, how will you ensure the well-being of asylum seekers sent to Rwanda? Do you see that as a UK government's responsibility or are you passing the buck to the Rwandan government on this? And I also wanted to ask a question of uh, the Rwandan Minister Baruta. Uh, there's a massive backlog of cases to get through when it comes to UK asylum claims. You could be welcoming, welcoming thousands of people here. How are you going to ensure you have the infrastructure to make sure that, that works? Thank you very much. Um, so first of all, let me um, just say um, this is a partnership. This is a partnership between our two countries, first and foremost. This isn't a one-sided deal. So I just want to absolutely deconstruct any myths around that. We have been working together in fact, I actually just want to pay tribute to our teams because it's our officials that for nine months, um, over nine months in fact, that have been working um, on a lot of detail. And when we publish our um, MOU, the Memorandum of Understanding, you will see the detail, how much work has taken place in terms of um, being fair and having the right processes to respect people that come here to Rwanda to resettle. Australia is not comparable. This is not the type of arrangement that Australia had. Australia as a sovereign country obviously had its own arrangement. Um, it is fair to say um, our teams have been working through facilities here. You've heard me mention in my opening remarks as well the technical experience that we are bringing. We believe in investing in Rwanda. We're very open about that. Um, we believe that's the right thing to do. Yes, on the economic development side, but also on the migration partnership. We, as two ministers, stand here today absolutely committed to changing some of the norms around the broken global migration system. Because for too long, other countries, and by the way, naysayers, just sit on their hands and have been watching people die. So we have the right processes in place. We have the right mechanisms for scrutiny, the checks and balances. That is incredibly important. And you heard me say in my remarks as well about respect of rule of law, 
but importantly as well, national and international laws and conventions. So in addition to the infrastructure aspect of uh, the program, when we were discussing uh, this partnership, we assessed our capacity to receive migrants. And we know that we have a capacity in place to, to receive migrants, but we'll be also investing in new infrastructures uh, going forward. Uh, and we are looking at shelters, but we are also looking at investing in the social infrastructures for this program to, to take place. We are looking at investing in education, we are looking at investing in uh, housing for the migrants, but also for our own people. So we have uh, been working on all aspects of the program, including uh, the infrastructure program. We are ready and we going forward we are going to keep investing with the support of the UK to have the capacity to, we need to, to receive the migrants. Nakoze, ni tukwa Jean-Pierre Kagabo, mwarela Arabie. Ni stri oba nina mahanga uru Rwanda. I will speak in Kenya Rwanda. Ministre na shakua baza, mwafuza mateka yihari uru Rwanda, yuwazo uru wachi emo. Ndetse keshi na keshi, uru Rwanda lugara gaza na uru wagaze kuyuwazo ujia, ujia basha kumu onjiro. Chane chane kumugawa ni wa Afrika. Kwa jirango, mugira wa nyarugwanda, neza inyungu bafite mkuba musi nyama sezerano ufatanyi nubu gongereza, ama sezerano kwa achira wa banu uh, wenda ba wimunzi changwa se, abi mchira. Hariko nuburyo umurijangu wa nyarugwanda wa tegwe kubana na wa banu. Murakoze. Murakoze, um, jirango, murabizi kuhari ichibazo jisadungu chiri ho, chijanyi na abi mchira wa nyura munzi razi temewe, venshi wa kajenda, uh, venyuzi munzi raza, zaba churu, zaba churu, zaba shaki nyungu zao. Ni baba ni mujamu mufa ba ba firiye mu nyanja bashaka shaka kuwa mbuka abantu kusanga bari mu bigo hano yugu ido shubara kuwa chira kandi ubona ahejo habo ha hata gara gara nez urguanda rero tu shindi kumateka ya chuo na vivuze yugu cha shi jizgo na wanu mweishi ba njuse muru vivuze mabui mpunzi ba jizi jihe ba tariba fite idihugu chivemer kandi mu mateka yacu nanone twakiriye impunzi nyinshi mu bihe bitandukanye n'uyu munsi dufite impunzi igera ku 1133 zituruka muri Kongo zimwe zindi Burundi ndetse dufite nabatutse Afghanistan dufite nabandi bashakaga bari baragiye muri zo gahunda zo gushaka kwambuka bajya ku mugabane w'uburayi ariko bahera muri Libya bafatwa nabi cyane baratotezwa Nabo muzi ku Rwanda twagiye tubakira tufite ikigo tubakira migashora kandi bigenda neza Ibyo byose rero byatumye dutekereza ko hari icyo dukwiye gukora uh, ku birebana n’iki kibazo uh, cyabimukira cyabi bagenda banyura mu nzira zitemewe bigashyira ubuzima bwabo mu kaga kandi ugasanga abo bifite akamaro cyane ari abafite ibintu by’ubucuruzi bijyanye no gutwara abo bantu mu nzira zitemewe ibyo byose rero byatumye dutekereza ko dukwiye kugira icyo dukora hari uburyo bumwe twashoboraga kubirebera tukabona abantu bapfa abandi bari mu bigo biraho ngaho bakamara mu myaka ariko dutekereza ko niba namategeko mpuza mahanga ariho ni bishingirwaho bitandukanye gahunda nziza tuvuga ko impunzi zigomba gufatwa ko abimukira bagomba gufatwa ibyo byose ni byiza ariko ntabwo bikora nta gisubizo bitanga uyu munsi rero icyo twiyemeje no gukorana n'ibihugu bimwe birimo igihugu cy'ubwongereza kugira ngo turebe niba hari ubundi buryo twagira uruhare mu gukemura kira kibazo cy'abimukira banyura mu nzira zitemewe mu gukora ibingibi tuzuwahiriza amatiye ku munza mahanga yose n'amasezerano ibihugu byacu byashyizeho umukono kandi ariko dutangire gutekereza ubundi buryo bwakoreshwa kugira ngo kira kibazo gikemuke amateka yacu rero igihugu cyacu n'amahame tugenderaho byose byashingiye kugira ngo dutangire umusanzu wacu mu kureba uburyo iki kibazo cyakemuka cyangwa se nibura kikagabanya ubukana nitubikora bikagenda neza turizera ko nibindi bihugu bishobora kuzarebera kuri gahunda nabo bikaye bakagira icyo bakora ikindi kandi ni gahunda ntabwo ari guterura abantu ngo bavane mu bwongereza baze babashire hano gusaba birangiriraho 
ni gahunda y'imyaka itanu mu gutangira tuzakura no kuburyo bari abantu nibo banogumye hangaha babashe gufashwa kubona imirimo binyuze kubanza guhabwa ibyangombwa bijyanye n'ubumenyi n'ubumenyi ngiro kugira ngo bashe ku kugira ubuzima muri iki gihugu kandi ari kubona afashwe no kugira aho batura kuvuzwa nibindi ibyo byose byarateganyijwe kandi muri yo gahunda tsoya dukomeza tunaganira tureba niba hari ibyo twanuza ariko dutangire kugira icyo dukora Chloe Chaplin from the I newspaper. Home Secretary, the Home Office has said that the first people in the UK will be notified of their relocation within a matter of weeks and flown in a matter of months, but we understand that the Rwandan government is still in negotiations over the lease of the first accommodation. So what is a realistic timeline for when the first people will arrive and how many people are you expecting to be relocated by the end of the year? And Foreign Minister, will you be accepting claims from people who present directly to Rwanda and not via the UK? Thank you. Chloe, thank you. Um, first of all, I'm not um, going to get into details of numbers. You've heard me say, I think probably over the last two years as Home Secretary that removing people um, from the UK with no legal basis um, to be in the UK is difficult and it is hard. And I have to say, I'm sure that there are many of you in this room that have written about some of the legal cases and things of that nature and some of the barriers that we face. But don't forget as well, that's why we have the new plan for immigration, the National Anti Borders Bill. We are ready to operationalize, and that's incredibly important. I do want to emphasize that. That is the nature of our partnership. So our teams have been coming in here for months and months and months, not just to negotiate, but to look at how we can operationalize this partnership. And of course, that covers resettlement, accommodation, the practicalities, meeting people's care needs, legal needs, et cetera, et cetera. We have a plan, a joint plan together to do that. And you've asked about the accommodation facilities here and leases. I mean, obviously, that is for the government here. Um, but we know through the work that our technical teams have been doing week after week and even over the days that we've been here as well and I had a team prior to my, my arrival here as well. We've all been working through the specific details of removals and also where the first arrivals will go to. So on the second question, this program will be um, dedicated to asylum seekers who are already in the UK. For other people who want to come to Rwanda to, to seek asylum or who want to be refugees in this country, there are existing channels and that, those ones will be used. And the government of Rwanda will use uh, the existing programs to, to, to address that, uh, that aspect. So direct flights for people who want to come here and uh, benefit from this program, uh, it, it won't work. The, it is addressing people who are seeking asylum from the UK and who are already in the UK. For others, there are existing mechanisms which will be used and uh, they have been uh, used in the past. They are, they are still using, they are still being used today. Thank you. Mariam Kone from TV5, just right here. My question is for you both. Uh, I'm wondering to know what's going to be the criteria you are going to use to select the migrant people they are going to reach in Rwanda, and uh, of course, how many times they are going to stay in Rwanda? Thank you, Minister. Thank you. So you've asked about eligibility and selection for people to come to Rwanda. Um, we're very clear that everyone who enters the UK illegally um, will be considered um, for um, resettlement and being brought over to Rwanda. I'm not going to divulge specific criteria for a number of reasons, because quite frankly, we are trying to break the model of the people smuggling gangs who use a range of um, ways in which to provide facilitation to our country and then obviously provide legal challenges to us as well. But the vast majority, I think it's important to say this, of people that have been arriving to the UK via illegal means such as small boats, by the people smugglers, um, you know, will obviously um, be considered to be relocated. 
Maybe I can add that some of the criteria we'll be considering as uh, government of Rwanda will be, uh, let's say, criminal records, for example, and uh, we do prefer not to receive people from neighboring countries, immediate neighbors, like uh, DRC, like Burundi, Uganda, or Tanzania, but uh, those are just some, but there will be a system in place to screen all those who would, we, who would wish to come here, or those who have been identified as people uh, likely to benefit from this program. So we have a team in place, and uh, uh, we need to go through uh, the files and set a number of criteria, and we keep working with the UK government on this. News. Um, Home Secretary, some of these asylum seekers will have family in the United Kingdom and will end up thousands of miles away at a country which was not of their choosing. Why do you think that those asylum seekers are better off in Rwanda than in the United Kingdom? And the second question, if I may, if a Ukrainian refugee were to arrive via an unofficial route, if they were to get on a boat across the channel, would they be eligible to be sent to Rwanda? And another question to you, Minister Baruta. Britain is essentially saying that these asylum seekers are not welcome you are willing to take them. Why are these asylum seekers welcome in Rwanda and not in the UK? What is the difference? So, Shihab, thank you for your question. And first of all, let me just differentiate um, between those who are admissible and inadmissible to the asylum system. I think it's fair to say, we've spoken about this many times, you've heard me repeatedly um, speak about differentiation in terms of who will have access to our asylum system and who will, will not. Those that will have access to the asylum system under the new plan for immigration, all our work in government, and you heard the Prime Minister say this this morning, will be those coming through safe and legal routes and obviously those fleeing persecution, oppression and tyranny. We've said that from day one. In fact, when I published the new plan for immigration last year, I was incredibly explicit about that. We are speaking specifically about those who are coming to our country through illegal means, small boats, for example, in refrigerated lorries, in the hands of people smugglers. We need to absolutely stop that from happening, and we have to stop this criminal trade. So differentiation is absolutely vital, and that is what we are speaking about through this partnership, Migration and Economic Development Partnership. It will be those individuals who are not admissible to the UK asylum system. And you've heard me speak frequently about parallel routes that are basically making our asylum system completely dysfunctional. The system is broken. It has no differentiation. And the people, pe those who pay the evil people smugglers get into the front of the queue while we have people that are being left behind, women, children, families, that actually need our help and support. Your second question, you asked about Ukraine. Now, let me be clear, we have a safe and legal route for Ukrainian nationals seeking to come to the United Kingdom. There is no reason why anybody should come to the country via the people smugglers, and that is effectively the model that we want to break. We want to stop this, this vile trade, this inhumane trade, where criminal gangs and smugglers are just profiteering and making so much money and doing all sorts of inhumane things to people that are coming over in lorries and also in boats. Um, you'll also know that with the Ukrainian scheme, over 50,000 visas have been granted. It is a safe and legal route. There are ways in which people can safely come to the United Kingdom. And that is an uncapped route. Let me re remind you, it's an uncapped route. That's quite unprecedented. It's the first uncapped route of this kind set up by the British government. Okay, the people we're talking here uh, are illegal migrants. It is not about the people choosing to stay here or to be maybe uh, better off in one place or another. It is uh, about illegal migrants. Those are stateless people who don't have any status in the UK. Or, and we need to, we just decided to give our contribution to a solution to ir uh, illegal migration. And uh, we are going to provide these people with uh, a minimum for them to be able to live a dignified life. We are going to invest in uh, skill development we're going to invest in social economic integration of these people. So one of, one, some would choose maybe to, to stay in the UK as he chooses to cross the, the, the Europe to, to reach the UK. But what we're going to provide with them is that's a, a dignified life with uh, shelter, with uh, skills for them to be able to social economically integrate our society, or to have those skills for them to be able 
to integrate in the, the country of origin when they decide, they decide to go back to their countries or to relocate to another place which will be available to receive them. So that's what we're going to do. It's not about just uh, anyone choosing to stay in uh, determined countries. We are dealing with uh, illegal migration. That's why we need to focus and to be able to, make, to, to give our contribution to the problem. Thank you. Thanks very much, everyone. Thank you.